Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today, I am going to be finally doing an update on my insect collection. It has been a very long time since I've done one of these. Actually, I think it's been about two years. Oops. <laughs> Which is pretty crazy, because it really has changed a lot. Back when I made that video, I was super new to the hobby. Pretty much everything that I had were things that I uh, caught. But now, it's actually mostly stuff that I bought. It is a few things that I've caught, but I have a much larger collection of a lot of cooler bugs, in my opinion. So let's just get started. As you can see right here, these are my darkling beetles. I have them all in one communal enclosure, which isn't very smart for breeding, but I really just keep them more to look at them because I think they're really cool. So there are a lot of different types in here. I have um, a couple different genera, and I bought most of them, but some of them I actually caught on my trip to Arizona this summer. That right there is Cryptoglossa muricata, Eliotes pseudorallis, and I actually have a lot of other Eliotes species as you can see here, and I'm not really sure about the identification for most of them, but I know that that is pseudorallis. And then we have Aspolis, uh, which one is that? As well as Levis. Right there, the smooth death feigning beetle. I have a couple of those. I also have blue death feigning beetles, as you can see there. And there. Uh, I think I have four in here. I did just spray them though, so they're not very blue at the moment, unfortunately. And one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that I have in here is an ironclad beetle. Now I just need to find it because I I don't know where it is. Also I have some of these and I, I really don't know what these are. I caught these in Arizona. I think I have three of them. Uh, if any of you have any idea what these are please let me know in the comments because I could not figure it out. Oh there's the ironclad beetle right there. It's not uh, one of the really cool black and white looking ones unfortunately but its underside actually is like lined almost. I don't really know how to explain it without picking it up and showing you. So let's take it out here. And yeah you can kind of see what I mean where like its legs are all kind of outlined. Okay so that's pretty much all I have to show for this enclosure. So now let's move on to the next one which is my Jerusalem Cricket. Uh, it's actually burrowed right now, and I don't see it on the sides. So let's move on to the next things, which are some of my favorites. I have two scorpions. I'll just take them down at the same time here. Now this one right here, in the larger enclosure, is an Arizona Bark Scorpion, which I caught myself. I actually caught both of them myself in Arizona. And it's actually gravid, which is cool. And I'm not entirely sure what the second one is, but my friend told me it was a Vejovis species. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but <laughs> whatever. Where is it in there? Okay, it looks like it's hiding, so I'm actually going to get out the black light. Okay, it was hiding, so I got out the black light. So let's see if we can find it now. Yep, there it is. I didn't even notice that before. And then, I guess I'll show you the bark scorpion too. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So now, let's move on to the next thing, which I also happen to catch in Arizona, which is a centipede. So, I'm not entirely sure what species this is, but... Uh, I'm, I have someone who, I guess, is going to help me identify it. So I guess I'll send them pictures soon, and hopefully I'll be able to identify this. But yeah, I'm going to put the lid on this before it gets out. But that's another pretty cool thing that I caught in Arizona. So now let's move on to the next enclosure. 
So I got two things down here, but unlike the scorpions, these are not related. The first one here is Osmoderma ramicola, the hermit flower beetle. I have an adult in here and a larva. And I also have a pupa uh, over here. I'll get it. That's a pupa of it. And I'm doing a trade for some larva, some L2 larva. I'll show you what I'm trading them for in a second. It's not this enclosure. It'll come after this. Uh, these are Dalmatian isopods in here. I, uh, I actually have three different morphs of Porcelio Scaver. These are just one of them. So, let's move on to the next enclosure now. So this here is Callosoma. I have two of them, not sure on the species, but there's some pretty cool ground beetles that we definitely don't get out here in the east. Actually we do, I'm sorry, we do, just not this one. Maybe this species, I really have no clue, but... I've never seen them before around here. And they have really strong defensive chemicals that you just cannot wash out. I have two in here. I guess the other one's in there. I actually had three, but one died yesterday, unfortunately. But I will be pinning it so you can look forward to a video of it. Along with a few other things that I'll be pinning soon. Next enclosure. And these are also Porcelio Scaber. So these ones right here are pretty uh, unique, I guess. I started out with, I think, five normal gray ones and one reddish one that I found in my backyard, and I really don't know what the morph of that is. I've never even heard of it before, but I just mixed them together a while ago, and now they've all kind of turned into this, like, palish orange color. Actually, that one's gray, so that might be one of the originals, but yeah, I've had this one for the longest, so it might be the biggest of my three colonies. And then over here are the actual orange ones which I got or which I bought from someone so yeah I have quite a few of these and those are all my isopods that I have those three Porcelio Scaver morphs but I have something that I think is probably a lot cooler as much as I love isopods you really cannot go wrong with rhino beetles these are Xylorictes thestalis. I have seven in here, but I'm actually sending them off for the trade in turn for some Osmoderma ramicola. And you may be wondering, why would you want to trade uh, these huge rhino beetles for some little flower beetles? But the answer is actually that Xylorictes are incredibly hard to breed, and they're really picky. So right now they're eating watermelon, because that's almost the only thing that they'll eat. They'll eat other melons, but they seem to like watermelon the most. And as far as I know, only one person has ever bred these before. And I just kind of like Osmoderma more, so that's why I'm doing that trade. And I'm actually setting them out tomorrow. And if all goes according to plan, I should have an unboxing video out of the Osmoderma larva. So you have that to look forward to. And this right here, is kind of a weird cup. Let me get my tongs for a second. So this has a lot of springtails in it, but that's actually not what it's for. It's more for these snails that I found a while ago in New York, I think, also. I, I believe they're disc snails. I'll get one. Actually, you can see it like that. I collected them because they're really flat, and they're super small. I don't know if they're breeding. I don't think they are. They may have bred once a while ago, but they haven't since then. Right, so I guess I have a few in there. And now let's move on to the final enclosure in my collection. These right here are Dermestids. And I collected them on the beach, actually, which is kind of weird. I know. But I found them under a corpse of a horseshoe crab. This substrate right here is for them to hide in. And then this foam is for them to burrow in. They can also hide in it, but they use it to pupate which I'm not sure if other beetles do that, but I know at least Dermestids like to pupate in styrofoam. As you can see, they have some meat in there. It does not smell good, by the way. And you can see some adults around there. I actually started with only three, and I have a lot more now. So you can kind of see them around. Like there's an adult. 
they're pretty cool looking they um they have like some white on them and their underside has like white hair they're worth putting up the smell of rotting meat in my room for so that will conclude my collection video and as you can see here these are a few dead specimens in need of pinning so you can expect a pinning video or maybe a few not sure how many I'll do on all these uh, out soon so uh, these two right here are actually D. Grantii, and I caught both of them alive in Arizona but uh, the male unfortunately died in shipping because I sent them back to myself and the female died like a few days ago in captivity this is Eliodes Sudoralis. I got them a long time ago. You can actually find the unboxing video for those on my channel. And this is one of the Calisoma beetles that I earlier mentioned died. And this is a female Dynastid Grantii that I found dead in Arizona. So I forgot to mention that I was going to do an unboxing video of all the things that I caught in Arizona, but unfortunately the video didn't save because my phone didn't have enough storage. So. I'm sorry about that, I actually filmed the whole video out, it was pretty unfortunate. But I'm hoping that this will make up for that. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. So this will conclude my collection tour video of 2018. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. If you have any feedback or input or anything that you'd like me to see and make a video on in the future, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks, bye.